And now we're up to our last disease of the digestive system. That is schistomyosis, schistomyosis <laughs> a.k.a. A liver disease. This is liver disease that's associated with swelling and malfunction. That's also accompanied by eosinophilia. This disease has been affecting human beings for thousands of years and is caused by a blood fluke. The blood flukes in particular that cause this are schistosoma masoni and schistosoma Soma Japan Icom. These species are morphologically and geographically very distinct from each other. As the name implies, one has been isolated or is focused around East Asia and Japan in that area. These diseases or these helmets share similar life cycles, transmission methods, and are able to have general lead the similar or generally have similar disease manifestations of them. It's been found that a few infectious agents can invade the skin directly, and the schistomyosis helminth is capable of doing that. It, schistomyosa hemobium is also capable of causing diseases within the human bladder as well, the urinary bladder more precisely. The signs and symptoms associated with infection by this pathogen are going to be heptomegaly, liver disease, and splenomegaly. So the enlargement of the liver, enlargement of the spleen, and a disease state of the liver. Occasionally, these eggs are carried through the bloodstream to the central nervous system and the heart. And this is going to result in granulate, granulatomous responses or granulomas forming within those tissues. Adult flukes can live for many years in the human host, causing chronic afflictions that elude immune defenses. These schistosomes are trematodes or flukes, that, and these can cause the disease. These d worms are more cylindrical than flat in appearance, and have often been just called blood flukes. We as humans are the definitive hosts for them, and that they have formed the adult stage in the human, and then snails are the intermediate hosts for these flukes. We'll start off as by having the larva burrow directly through the skin. And this is what's particularly terrifying of, of this fluke, is that this fluke can burrow directly through the skin of the human and get into the bloodstream and enter the adult stage. And then eventually it will mature and eggs will be passed through the digestive tract into the water supply and infect snails. And then the snails will release larvae that can then burrow back into the next human host. Once this pathogen is inside of the host, it's going to coat itself with proteins that we have in our own bloodstream. Effectively, it's camouflaging or cloaking itself from our host defense systems by mimicking the surface antigens that are supposed to be in our bodies. This coast reduces its surface antigen antigenicity. In other words, it makes it much less likely to elicit an immune response and allows it to remain in the host indefinitely. The transmission cycle of this particular pathogen is life cycle D, and it's quite complex. This life cycle begins when we release eggs into irrigated fields or ponds. Sometimes we can do this accidentally because we just have to go to the bathroom. Sometimes we do it deliberately because we're fertilizing with human excrement. This pathogen is endemic to 74 countries, most of which are going to be in Africa, South America, the Middle East, and the Far East. Schistomyosis is the second most prominent parasitic disease after malaria, and that is by a wide margin. Malaria affects um, far more people than schistomonosis, but schistomonosis still affects approximately 200 million people worldwide, so it's not something to be trifled with. Schistomonosis is caused by schistomon schistosoma masoni and schistosoma japonicum. It is um, capable of mimicking host antigen so it can remain in our bodies indefinitely. To treat that, um, or to prevent this, we typically need to avoid contaminated vehicles. So if there's a body of water that is contaminated, do not go swimming in that body of water. Something that I find particularly terrifying about this pathogen is even if you have a drop of water on your skin and there's a fluke in that drop of water, it can swim around within the drop of water and then burrow into your skin. So if you are swimming in a contaminated body of water, get out of the body of water and make sure to shower or towel off 
completely. Um, to treat this, we use an anti-helminthic drug. Some distinctive features are going to be the fact that it can penetrate the skin directly and then swim through our body. And approximately 200 million or 230 million new infections occur every year. Here's a summary of many of the diseases of the digestive tract, and there are legion. There are quite a few of those diseases. If you have any questions for me about schistomyelosis, please feel free to post them in the class discussion board or shoot me an email. Happy studies!